Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video where I'm going to go through a complete update taking this wing here. This is my aging AR Wing Pro. This is the first one I ever got. A little bit beat up, but it needs updating. It's running on an old version of iNav, a 2.5 I think, but it needs updating to something more modern for some videos that I want to make and I'd like to take it up to iNav 4.0. Now I've had a couple of questions recently from people about what's the process, how do you do this? I would always recommend if you have the time, go through the entire setting from big start to end. However, I've had a couple of questions as well from people saying, do you need to do the accelerometer calibration? Are there any shortcuts? So let me go through the process, how I'm going to update this one and take a few shortcuts, which will dramatically reduce the time it takes to get this little sucker on iNav 4.0. So here in iNav on the desktop, it's all set up. So if I move the model on the desk, that's all moving in here. Uh, we can tell what version of iNav we're running. If you're ever not sure and you can't remember what version's on here, if you just type uh, version in the CLI, it'll actually tell you the release that you're on. Now you can always download the old versions of Configurator and access those. I'm running the old version of Configurator 2.6 here. Uh, so you can get that. I'll put a link down below that shows you how to get old versions of the Configurator. I, on my computer here, actually have all of the old configurators. I keep everything so that there's a, I can just jump around. But if we go back into iNav here, if we exit out of here, uh, this is how the model is currently configured. Now, I would recommend before you do any updating, there's two or three things I'd recommend that you do. First of all is I would go through each of the tabs and refresh your memory of how everything is set up. If you can take screenshots, I would do that as well. It just makes it an awful lot easier to get to the other side and everything to be happy. Things like the standard protocol, for the ESCs, how the ports are configured, how you've got the configuration set up, things like, for example, the pitch degrees. So for example, how on a fixed wing, you took into account the fact that it flies slightly nose up. You did it in here in later versions of iNav from 3.0 on, it changes. So I would just refresh your memory of how this is all set up. Once you're happy, then go into the CLI to clear the output history, do something called dump, and that will save every single one of the settings on your flight controller as it is now. And then when that's finished, click save to file and save that somewhere on your computer. However, uh, that is not the one that I use. Let's uh, clear output history again. Let's do a diff all. Diff all, in my humble opinion, is far more useful. So let's save that to a file. Let's stick it on... Uh, so like here, so let's just call it diff all and hit enter and that's everything saved. So that has now backed up the conf entire configuration via the dump, which will allow us to put the dump file back into here and have everything set. So we're in a good place. Now, before we flash things, let's come out of this. Let's go into what we've just done. There's diff all. Let's create a copy of it and we'll edit this one. In diff all, if we open it with notepad, we can see in here all the different settings that we have. And by putting this into a new version of iNav, it can save us a lot of messing around. So there's the motor mixes, there's the servo mix. It's all nicely annotated, which is great. Global variables, logic, which features you have turned on or off, how the serial uh, ports are set up and everything else. Now, I would keep everything, things like the on-screen display layout and all that jazz. I would just get rid of anything that's to do with PID tuning and things like uh, LPF filters, stuff like that. So let's get rid of the LPF filter stuff, uh, zoom down. So we'll, again, we're just getting rid of anything that might be related. We'll keep the roll angles and things. And that's about it, actually. There isn't a lot in here. There's the accelerometer calibration, which we will keep. We'll keep all the other things. Um, the align board pitch, uh, again, we don't need that because that's set in a different way. 
and we're looking pretty good. The only other thing I'll do is take save out the bottom and then we will uh, save that on the computer. And what I'll do is we'll keep that open because we'll need that in a minute. Right, now we can flash it because we have all the changes that we need to load in. Let's open iNav configuration, uh, configurator 4.0 because at the moment I don't want to go to 4.1, it's new and I'm getting lots of um, viewers and patrons letting me know about issues they're having with 4.1. So I want to wait a little bit. So let's go into firmware flasher. We know the target that we need because it's actually at the top of that diff file. There it is, 405SC, that's what we're after. So we'll choose a board, it may take 405SC. Let's go for iNav 4, not 4.1, there we go. Do a full chip arrays, load it online and click flash firmware. That'll take it into DFU and that will start the flashing. So we are just gonna wait for this to finish and then we'll only need to answer the first one, maybe two questions in iNav and then we can upload that default and then it's just a case of checking everything. Okay, there we are. We've just finished verifying. Programming is successful. Again, wait for the flight controller to finish booting with a new version of iNav on it. Now, if we click connect for the first time, it's gonna ask us what kind of plane we have. Again, this is slightly different from the previous versions uh, because now we have to have it, say it's airplane without a tail. That will save the default settings and cause it to reboot as all those things are set for us. Now it's rebooted, we can go into the CLI, we can get hold of our diff all with all of the settings in. Again, just double check that I haven't got any PID stuff in here. PID stuff, it tends to be the things that gets changed quite a lot. And at the moment, I say that looks good. So we're gonna say Control A, Control C for copy. We're gonna Click into the write your command here, press control V, which will paste everything in and hit enter. Now that has set everything up to be what it was on the previous version of iNav. However, because we took the save off the bottom, when it finishes, it isn't immediately going to reboot. And that's important because anything in here that's problematic will force a red uh, kind of warning to appear. So we just need to scroll back and make sure we didn't get any warnings and we didn't, which is great. So I'm going to type save and hit enter. That's gonna save all those configuration settings, but you do need to double check once you've done that, that everything's gonna work because now it should look and feel like the original version. There's the wing. We can see that it's sat nice and level but not everything is going to be set because lots of things has changed. You see the GPS is set up. So the calibration has come across because the calibration data, if I can even say it, is actually here. Where is it? Let's go down a little bit. There's the calibration data that's been copied across and that looks all good. The mixer looks fine. So I would just go through each of the tabs again, just make sure that it all looks good. So for example, ESC protocol has been set to 1125. I want that standard, let's save that. Uh, ports look like they're good. The GPS is uh, fired up. Configuration, this is a tab that you're gonna to need to visit if it's a fixed wing model because a few things have changed. Board and center alignment, fixed wing level pitch trim, so if we go into the CLI and get that, we'll see by default it's at zero. This is the offset that we had in the old versions of iNav. So we'll set it as four degrees. And we'll save it. So that will fix that little bit. There's also some other things that are probably gonna be worthwhile changing if you're coming from a pre-version three um, of iNav. So that was in configuration. Let's just carry on down on that particular panel. So in here, I would things like use Galileo satellites is gonna be helpful for me. I would then also continuously trim servos on fixed wing, make sure that all the things that you want on are on. I am going to enable the craft name stuff. This is a GGI model. 
So now I can do that with the latest versions of iNav. That'll give me the warnings in those pieces. Check the fail safe is set to return to home. PID tuning and uh, stuff like that is going to be done in the first couple of flights. I would recommend redoing an auto tune, auto trim, and auto level all those pieces uh, in a new version of iNav. Check the receiver is working okay. Check the modes are okay as well. This is how it's uh, copied them across and it looks all good to me. There's nothing wrong with that. Check how your OSD is laid out. Don't forget, of course, that if you use the DJI stuff in the latest versions of iNav, you can now disable those pieces that are not going to work in the DJI OSD by this one here, saying so hide unsupported elements. So I'm going to make sure that's turned on. I'm going to, probably going to go around here and change everything because this uh, layout is more for analog. And then that's your lot, really. So then from here on in, it's standard setup stuff. It's take it out to the field, make sure you can arm it, check the direction of the control surfaces, then launch it, go through the standard auto trim, auto uh, tune routines, and you should be good. But that's the way that I do it when I'm rushed using something like a diff all file can dramatically in reduce the amount of time that you need to do. And for those of you that don't want the idea of doing things like the calibration of the accelerometer, you can just cut and paste that from the old configuration into the new one. And if you just want to do that bit and kind of manually set up everything else, you can just cut those pieces out of the diff all file. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.